Hi everybody, welcome to the uh, next episode of our Drive Time series and uh, I couldn't be more happy to welcome a very good friend of mine, Mark Bate, to the show. Mark, welcome. How are you, sir? I'm very well, mate. It's good to speak to you, mate. Um, normally, we're sort of seeing each other at a track and being able to talk to each other. This is, this is really now. This is how we're going to be for the next. Well, we don't know, do we? No, no. It's, it's a shame we're not sort of face to face, let's say Cadwell or somewhere like that. But hey, we do what we can, can't we? So, Mark, I obviously know what you do in motorsport very, very well indeed. We've worked quite closely together, of course. But for those who don't know, Mark Bate, what is it you do in motorsport? I'm a, I'm a megalomania. <laughs> um, I, I basically invent race series, I suppose. I suppose that's what I do. I, I, I run the um, 116 Trophy. I'm the sort of coordinator, race coordinator. Yeah, you, yeah definitely. You, you certainly are. Your T-shirt sort of gives that away a bit, doesn't it, as well? You move your hands. So, yeah, there you go. Yeah. This is Ray Grimes. He does the, uh, all of the sort of, you know, what, what, I can't do too much with the now, but we used to call it sort of T-shirts. And, yeah. Tops and that. All the gear. But yeah, and while we're talking about Ray, get well soon, Ray. I hope you're watching this because you've had us worried for a month or so and we're still very worried, mate. Uh, get well soon, pal. Good words, Mark. Good work. Well, yeah, best of luck, Ray. We uh, hope you get well soon. So, Mark, let's talk about the 116 Trophy. Uh, it's first season, last season. We had a blast filming with you. Everybody seemed to have a good time. Onwards and upwards? Yeah, yeah. We, um, after we did have a good time. We had we had some laughs, and 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 we we started with a brand new car, with brand new races, and and we ended with with a car that we'd all got to know and love a bit, and we were really chuffed with it because the car always gives back more than we give it. So we don't let put any good parts on it, or any. Let, let, let's put it this way: we don't spend a lot of money on our cars, but they still when they're out on track and they come back they still produce very well and people are very happy with them so it all gives back quite a lot to them so we're, we're more than happy man. we're more than happy well i've got to say i've actually driven a 116 trophy car now with um, team 4040 racing jazz banks very kindly uh let me out loose at brands hatch in one of his cars and it was a lot of fun i've got to be honest it, it, it was a lot of fun i felt you know you know me I, i'm not a racing driver hence the reason why i'm in front of the camera not behind <laughs> but I felt confident behind it. You know, it only took me a lap or two, and I really got to grips with it. They are quite easy to drive, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I used to race, as people know, but I'm more an engineer now, and I, I don't actually drive them myself, and I've never driven what I want once it's around the track. Wow. So there's the, the a few reasons for that. When, when I started getting involved with drifting, uh, and, and the guys who, 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 who I'm involved with with drifting up at the track, they sort of appreciated that I didn't drive and, and I used to, I, I learned more that way and I learned to watch the cars and watch the way the set cars were set up and listen to the differentials in the engines and then we went from there and I've I, I, I deliberately done this with this 116 so I, I watch more and I, it gives you more feedback from me. I get more feedback from when somebody gets out of the car and say this, that, rather than me driving, it, I just, oh it needs this, it needs that and I know for a fact if I drove that car I'd always think it needs a bit more. And it doesn't, it, we stopped it, and that's it, it doesn't need anything, because it's still fun and it's cheap. But yeah, everybody who gets out of the car says the same as what you've just said. You know, they've enjoyed it, they get to grips with it, they know that the speed's not there instantly, but you've got to build it and build it, and eventually you get some good speed out of it. Yeah. And it keeps you on your toes. If you relax for a minute, then somebody will just overtake you. So that's, uh, Mark, let's talk about you a little bit, all right, because, uh, you know, that's what we're here for. I want to find out more about you, Mark. So how did you get involved in motorsport initially? You mentioned drifting. Is that, is that where it started for you? No, I, my first job, I, I was a, um, I was a lock maker by trade. Right. Uh, from school, I went to a jeweler's and I, I started the watches. Um, I went to, uh, I, basically, I, I went to horology to college with no college of energy. I had a really bad accident um, oh. on a night out, and, and it, it, people who know me personally know I used to be a rogue, and there's no two ways about it. But I used to do a lot of fighting and stuff, and, and fighting was affecting a lot, you know. Um, and it cost me a Um I nearly cut my hand off, and I had nowhere to go. But the brother was a panel beater, he's always been a very good panel beater. 
and a little bit of a light hilarious. Um, but he's very similar to me. And we've always been very close. And I've always worked with cars with him. And from being kids, we've always built motorbikes and cars. So with only having one hand, I, I had no choice but to do something with my brother. Yeah. So we, I, I started building car engines, heat engines, uh, racing, drag racing. Um, and we started on this project thing where we did, um, we just, we lived right next to a scrapyard, we didn't have much money. And we'd go to the scrapyard and we knew the guys who owned the scrapyard, they were family friends. So they, we'd, we'd get them to get the car down off the shelf and we'd, we'd build it then and we'd go to get engine in it. And we went from there. Nice. But my first job was to uh, Lodge Sports, who, Lodge, Lodge Sports, who run the, the Cayman and the Boxster in, in Club Enduro and in the, in the, in the new posting. Uh, and that was my first job. I was in a apprenticeship at Lodge Sports. And, I think I said it first in 1994. Um, that was me then. I've done a couple of years there. I went, where did I go from there? I just literally went from there and on and on. And then eventually I got a job. I, 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 I went back working with my brother. Uh, he had a big body shop at the time. We just did Porsches again. Um, and I, I went from there and I went to work at ASW Lightning. Uh, with Steve Murphy, who was a friend of mine from a previous job years before. Um, and I broke their cars for six years. We did 150 cars a year for six years. So that's why I know so much about BMWs. I was yeah. the guy who used to pull and put parts on the shelf. And I was methodical with that. But in the meantime, we'd started racing the E30s, which was a uh, PBMW at the time, former uh, production BMW. Yeah. yeah. You know, I'm very close to Project A. And we raced E30s for a few years. And that, we, our first cars was E30 Tourings. We had one apiece, me and Steve. And it was just hilarious. We just, I love the fun of it. And, and, and that's why my race series is not very serious because I don't like the very serious stuff. It's not for me. Yeah. And I don't think for everyone. Uh, so we took a, a tour in, we raced that, and we had good fun. And then I went, I left the BMW. Because I started the I wanted to build a race series of my own, and, and it was we designed the compact truck. We actually built yeah. the, the first compact truck at ASW Lab and workshop there. Obviously, we've got all the parts in the world. Um, so I've, that's my history, really, in motorsport. I've always been oh, mostly in motorsport, and I've always sort of been there. You know what I mean? Yeah. So where's your in, in, the, in the race? Like that. Uh, no, nothing high profile. I'm not a high profile. Yeah, obviously. So where's your favourite place then, uh, Mark? Which is your favourite track to go to and watch a bit of racing or be involved in it? Where'd you get a bit of a buzz? Which circuit do you get a bit of a buzz thinking, oh yeah, I'm going going there this weekend? Driving, I'm, I'm very close to Alton Park and, and, and I've got friends who, who live and work at Alton Park. Um, I, I'm, I'm quick at Alton Park and I've studied the track. I, I'm one of them people that are, are very slow learner, but I'm methodical in the way I learn. Yeah. And in Alton Park, I've been around a lot, and I've been taught by different um, tutors around Alton Park, some, some very, very good drivers. Um, and I was also taught by Howard Hunt. Now, Howard Hunt is, is a good friend of mine, but we're not getting on at the moment for some reason. But the, the, the fact is, he, he, he explained how to drive, and he explained how to drive in a mechanical way, yeah. which at the point I was struggling with my driving, and he, he explained it to me mechanically. And he showed me on a car, um, and he's, he's not a, a, an engineer, Howard, he, he's, a, he's a racing driving instructor, but he's very, very technical. Uh, and he showed me, and, and all of a sudden, a few things that he just clicked, and that was me then. I, I went from there, and I took everything that he, 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 he told me, and I, I used it and used it, and I still, I still everything he said is correct, I still use it to this day. But it meant that I could study them race tracks, and I, I, I then went and studied all the time, and you know what we I'm so quick around Alton Park. I'm not saying I'm the fastest, but for myself, I get such a, a buzz out of driving yeah. Alton Park. I'm so on the edge, and I love it. Fantastic. But, uh, other other tracks are concerned. Uh, if, if if you want to go and watch a race, uh, a race, you must go to Brands Hatch. Yeah, I uh, agree with that. Yeah, you've got to go to Brands Hatch to experience that. 
Um, you've got to go to Cadwell Park to experience that because the, 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 the contrast between Grand and Cadwell are amazing. Yeah. Uh, and as you know, Mick Young's son, Emo, you, you've met him a few times, he's always with the shadow. He, he's been for Grand, he's been, he's been for all the tracks that the one one six trophy does, and he's he like that internet now. And, and it's infectious, isn't it? You go to oh, a track, yeah. and you start. It's a bit like when I, when I first went to football, the friends took me to the Manchester City one, and it's not particularly an unbelievably good game. So I was then a City fan. It's the same with racing. Yeah, it is, yeah. you, you don't, you've got to get out and experience it and get there. Racing isn't all about driving. There's more to racing than driving. And, you, and there's more interesting things you can do in, in, in racing that's not just driving. You know I mean? Exactly. And I'm pleased you said that, actually, because that's kind of the point of everything we kind of stand for in my supercar. Yes, the racing is, is essentially the product, but there's a lot more to it than that. In fact, it's probably only about 20% of what actually goes on. Um, so... Yeah, I'm really pleased you said that. So, look, Mark, let's. Um, I'm going to let you go in a minute because I appreciate your time. But if somebody wants to find out about the um, Gas Rock 116 trophy, where do they go? How do they find out about it? We have a website. We have um, 116trophy.com. Um, but we're, 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 we're like everybody, everything's Facebook. Yeah. Um, you know me, I'm very approachable. Somebody else can do Facebook. So they want to race. I don't mind telling them about the one more six, and I don't mind telling them about other race series if, if, if the one more yeah. six doesn't suit them. So if somebody wants to race, they can come and chat with me anyway. It doesn't matter whether you race with me or not. I have no qualms with helping you out to, 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 with the car or some knowledge or some advice. If one more six doesn't suit you, then it doesn't suit you. I don't mind that whatsoever. But yeah, you get in touch with me on, on Facebook or any, any of our drivers. Um, you mentioned 40, 40 racing that took yeah. you around. Uh, I think it was Brands. Brands. They're, they're great to get out with. Um, they do a lot for the filter. Uh, so Facebook, uh, website, uh, email. Yeah. You, uh, and that's fine. And anyway, I mean, my, my, my mobile phone number's on my Facebook page. Get shot from one to the uh, I must say hello to Jack Jackson. Thanks very much for looking after us over the years. Um, <laughs> but yeah, my mobile phone is on there. People are welcome to text me or ring me. It's fine. Fantastic. <laughs> I can vouch for that, Mike. You're you're a great guy. I got I got. I'm not just saying that because we're doing this, but you really are. You've been you open your arms up to us, and we're we're very grateful for that. So thank you. Um, and look, Mark, do stay safe. I'm going to let you head off now. Go enjoy the rest of your day. But thank you so much for your time. And let's let's. Well, I will see you trackside sooner rather than later. I know we will. Yeah, as, as soon as that flag gets lifted, but we're racing, it's a simple answer. I know everyone's got to know we're going to race today, but we're ready to race, and we're going to be able to see you at the end, and we will see you at the start, and we'll have a bit of a cool <laughs> Yeah, we will. All right, buddy.